common introductory course for the TOEFL test, The Paper Test, by Deborah Phillips, published by Pearson Longman, ELT, a division of Pearson Education. CD 2. Listening Part B. Exercise 8. Listen to the first part of each of the conversations and decide on the topic of each conversation. Number 1. The first part of conversation 1 is... Did you understand the assignment the professor gave us today? I'm not sure that I did. He said to read chapter 6, didn't he? What is the topic of conversation 1? Number 2. The first part of conversation 2 is... Did you hear what happened to Greg? I heard he got stung by a bee. Well, he did get stung, but it wasn't by a bee. It was a hornet that stung him while he was out walking in the park. What is the topic of conversation 2? Number three. The first part of conversation three is... Can you tell me about the university shuttle bus system? This is such a large campus, and I have classes all over campus. I need to take the shuttle bus from one class to another, or I'll never make it on time. What do you need to know? What is the topic of conversation three? Exercise 9. Listen to each complete conversation and answer the questions that follow. Questions 1 through 4. Listen as two students discuss what a professor said in a recent class. Did you understand the assignment the professor gave us today? I'm not sure that I did. He said to read chapter 6, didn't he? Yes, he said to read chapter 6. Then I think he also said something about answering the questions at the end of the chapter. He said to answer the questions, too? I didn't hear that part of the assignment. I think he did, but I'm not sure. Maybe we should go ask one of the other students what the assignment is, just to be safe. I think we should. Number one. What are the man and woman discussing? Number two, how much are they supposed to read? Number three, what part of the assignment is unclear? Number four, what will they probably do next? Questions five through eight. Listen as two people describe something that happened to a friend. Did you hear what happened to Greg? I heard he got stung by a bee. Well, he did get stung, but it wasn't by a bee. It was a hornet that stung him while he was out walking in the park. If it was a hornet, then Greg probably came very close to the hornet's nest. I understand that hornets usually only attack if they're trying to protect the nest where the eggs are waiting to hatch. So hornets are only dangerous if you come close to their nests? Yes. So Greg probably came close to a hornet's nest while he was out on his walk in the park. Then we should find out where Greg was walking and not go walking there. Number five. What happened to Greg? Number six. 
Number six. Why do hornets attack? Number seven. What did Greg probably come close to? Number eight. What is the woman's advice? Questions 9 through 12. Listen to two students on a university campus. Can you tell me about the university shuttle bus system? This is such a large campus and I have classes all over campus. I need to take the shuttle bus from one class to another or I'll never make it on time. What do you need to know? I think it's a really great system. First of all, where does it go? The university shuttle bus system goes all over campus. It doesn't leave the campus. If you want to travel off campus, you'll need to take the city bus system. But the university shuttle bus system will get you from one class to the next very efficiently. And how much does it cost? It's free. Can you believe it? So you don't have to pay a cent to get all around the university campus. That's really great. And how do I catch the shuttle bus? Just look for one of the bright yellow shuttle bus signs and go stand next to it. You can see the yellow shuttle bus signs all over campus. A shuttle bus will come along approximately every five minutes, so you shouldn't have to wait long. That all sounds good. Thanks for your help. No problem. Number nine. What are the man and woman discussing? Number 10. What area does the university shuttle bus cover? Number 11. How much does the shuttle bus cost? Number 12. What color are the shuttle bus signs? TOEFL exercise, skills 7 through 9. In this exercise, you will use all of the information that you learned in skills 7 through 9. Questions 1 through 4. Listen as a man asks for directions. Can you tell me where the post office is? I need to mail a package. Oh, that's easy. It's very close by. Where is it exactly? You go down the street for one block and then turn right. You'll see it right there. Do you know what time the post office closes? I'm pretty sure that it's open until 5. Oh, that's great. It's only four o'clock now, so I should be able to get there and get this package mailed today. Thanks for your help. No problem. Number one. What are the man and woman discussing? Number two. How far away is the post office? Number three. How much longer is the post office open today? Number four, what will the man probably do next?
questions five through eight. Listen as a man and woman discuss some interesting information that the woman just learned. Did you read this magazine article? The information in it is unbelievable. What's the article about? It's about paper, specifically about how much paper Americans use up each year. Why are you so interested in paper? It's not paper that I'm interested in. It's trees. Because Americans use so much paper, many trees have to be cut down. According to the article, how much paper do Americans use? About 50 million tons of paper a year. Can you believe it? That's probably a lot of trees, isn't it? You bet it is. 850 million trees a year. I can't believe we really need to use so much paper. Neither can I. I'm sure we could reduce the amount of paper we use if we wanted to. Number five. Where did the woman learn the information? Number six. What is the topic of the conversation? Number seven. Approximately how much paper do Americans use in one year? Number eight. What does the woman want people to do? Questions 9 through 12. Listen as two students discuss a problem with one of their classes. Can you believe how much reading we have for our American literature class? When I signed up for a literature class, I knew that there would be lots of reading, but I never expected this much. Yes, and I thought that since it was a class on American novels, we would just be reading some novels. What a surprise. Not only do we have to read a bunch of novels, we also have to read the textbook, which gives information about the authors and their novels. And we also have to find journal articles in the library, which have commentary about the novels. So we have three things to read. The novels themselves, the textbook, and journal articles. That's right. And there's a lot to read from each of the three. Well, I'm heading for the library right now to get started on all that reading. What about you? I'm on my way back to the dorm. But I'll be doing the same thing that you are, spending the rest of the afternoon with my books. Number nine. What problem are the man and woman discussing? Number 10. Which class are the man and woman discussing? Number 11. What do the man and woman not have to read for the class? Number 12. What are the man and woman both going to do next? Listening Part C. Exercise 11. Listen to the first part of each of the talks and decide on the topic of each talk. Number 1. The first part of Talk 1 is... One of the most deadly plants in the world is poison hemlock. This plant grows in many parts of the world. It is quite dangerous to humans. People can die if they eat it. 
What is the topic of talk one? Number two. The first part of talk two is... Today we're going to see something that most of you have probably never seen before. A frog jumping contest. This frog jumping contest is part of the Calaveras County Fair in Calaveras County, California. What is the topic of talk two? Number three. The first part of talk three is... Hello, I'm Mr. Teal, the head librarian, and I'd like to explain to you about checking out books from this library. What is the topic of talk three? Exercise 12. Listen to each complete talk and answer the questions that follow. Questions 1 through 4. Listen to a lecture by a biology professor. One of the most deadly plants in the world is poison hemlock. This plant grows in many parts of the world. It is quite dangerous to humans. People can die if they eat it. One thing that makes poison hemlock really dangerous is that it looks like some plants that people normally eat. Hemlock belongs to the same family of plants as the carrot. The leaves of the plant look very much like parsley, and its roots look like carrots. People have died when they've made a mistake and have eaten poison hemlock when they thought that they were eating either parsley or carrots. Number one. What is the topic of the talk? Number two, where is hemlock found? Number three, what is true about hemlock? Number four, what can happen to someone who eats hemlock? Questions five through eight. Listen as a tour guide describes what some tourists are going to see. Today, we're going to see something that most of you have probably never seen before. A frog jumping contest. This frog jumping contest is part of the Calaveras County Fair in Calaveras County, California. In this frog jumping contest, about 2,000 frogs and their owners participate, and more than 40,000 people usually come to watch. The frog owners encourage their frogs to jump by yelling, screaming, jumping, singing, talking, blowing any way they can. To win the contest, a frog needs to jump three times in a row. This contest is based on a story by Mark Twain. It's called The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County. Twain published the story in 1865. 63 years later, in 1928, the people of Calaveras County decided to hold a contest just like the one that Twain had described a number of years earlier. Number five. What type of contest is it? Number six. Approximately how many frogs participate each year?
Number seven. How many times does a frog need to jump to win? Number eight. What is true about the frog jumping contest? Questions 9 through 12. Listen to a talk given to a group of new university students. Hello, I'm Mr. Teal, the head librarian, and I'd like to explain to you about checking out books from this library. Students with ID cards can check out books, and the books may be kept for up to two weeks. The process for checking the books out is really quite simple because of the computerized checkout system. When you find a book in the library that you would like to check out, just bring it here to the circulation desk. The circulation desk is the desk where you check materials out from the library. All you need when you come to the circulation desk is the book or books that you want to check out and your student ID card. At the circulation desk, the clerk will take the book and the ID card and run them through the computerized scanner. A form is printed quickly by the computer, and you need to sign the form. That's all there is to it. Just remember to bring your ID card when you come to the library, to sign the form at the circulation desk, and to return the books within two weeks, and you won't have any problems here at the library. Number nine, who is giving this talk? Number 10, what is the circulation desk? Number 11. What do the students need to take books from the library? Number 12. How long may students keep the books? TOEFL exercise, skills 10 through 12. In this exercise, you will use all of the information that you learned in skills 10 through 12. Questions 1 through 4. Listen to a description of the Ringling Museum. In a few minutes, we'll be arriving at the Ringling Museum in Sarasota, Florida. This museum was built by John Ringling and his wife Mabel. John Ringling became famous as one of the Ringling Brothers, who formed the Ringling Brothers Circus. We'll be visiting two areas, the Museum of Art and the Circus Gallery. The Museum of Art contains some excellent Baroque paintings, including some by Rubens. The Circus Gallery contains items from circuses of years past, including a 100-year-old circus parade wagon, Enjoy your visit to the Ringling Museum. I'll see you back at the bus in three hours. Number one. Who is probably talking? Number two. Why did John Ringling become famous? Number three, what is included in the circus gallery? Number four, what should the people do 
in three hours. Questions 5 through 8. Listen to a lecture by a business professor. Henry Ford's Model T automobile is a great example of the benefits of mass production. Henry Ford introduced the Model T in 1908. These first Model T cars weren't mass produced. They were sold for a price of $850 each. The Model T cars were very popular and many people wanted to own them. To meet this high demand, Henry Ford designed the first major assembly line. With this assembly line, cars could be produced more quickly, efficiently, and cheaply. Using the assembly line method of production, the company was able to produce 1,000 identical cars a day. The price of the Model T dropped from $850 to $440 per car by 1914. The price dropped even further to $290 per car by 1924. This example clearly demonstrates the effect that mass production can have on prices. Number five. What is the Model T? Number six, when was the Model T introduced? Number seven, what was not true about assembly line production by Ford? Number eight, what happened to the price of the Model T over time? Questions nine through 12. Listen to a talk by a university graduate student advisor. Hello, I'm Ms. Barker the graduate advisor in the psychology department. You should all be new graduate students in this department. Because I'm your advisor, we'll be seeing a lot of each other during your studies. Today, I'd like to explain a choice that you have to make about your program in psychology. You must decide how you want to finish your program. At the end of this program, you must do one of two things. Either you must write a thesis, or you must take comprehensive exams. Let me tell you a little bit about each of them. A thesis is a long research paper, perhaps one or 200 pages long. It's an in-depth study of one area from your graduate studies. Comprehensive exams are exams that cover all of the material in your graduate program. Basically, you must decide if you want to cover one area in depth in your program so you would write a thesis, or if you'd like a more general program, so you would take comprehensive exams. You don't need to decide today about the thesis or comprehensive exams. You have six months to think about it. Number nine. Who is Ms. Barker talking to? Number 10. What choice do the students have to make? Number 11. What are comprehensive exams? Number 12. When do the students need to make the decision?
Listening comprehension, post-test. In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers you hear. Do not take notes or write in your test book at any time. Do not turn the pages until you are told to do so. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you will hear, That exam was just awful. Oh, it could have been worse. What does the woman mean? In your test book, you will read, A. The exam was really awful. B. It was the worst exam she had ever seen. C. It couldn't have been more difficult. D. It wasn't that hard. You learn from the conversation that the man thought the exam was very difficult and that the woman disagreed with the man. The best answer to the question, what does the woman mean, is D. It wasn't that hard. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Go on to the next page. Number one. When is your art class? It begins tonight. What does the woman mean? Number two. I'd like a cup of coffee, please. Would you like me to bring that with the dessert? Who is the man most likely to be? Number three. Have you seen Ellen? She drove to the shopping center. What does the man say about Ellen? Number four. Why are you so upset with Bill? Because he didn't tell me the truth. What does the woman say about Bill? Number five. These prices are really good. I'll say. What does the man mean? Number six. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Please pay better attention. What does the man want the woman to do? Number seven. Look how hard it's raining. Let's stay inside today. What does the woman suggest? Number eight. Who made the decision? The decision was made by the judge. What does the man mean? Number nine. Did you finish that long chemistry problem? No. 
I was unable to solve it. What does the woman mean? Number 10. How about if we stay here tonight and watch television? But I don't want to stay home. What does the man want to do? Number 11. Can you tell me when the term paper for this course is due? In the last week of the semester. Where does this conversation probably take place? Number 12. Where's Hank? He's in the pool. What does the woman imply about Hank? Number 13. I'm always so tired during the day. Why don't you get a little more sleep at night? What does the man suggest? Number 14. Have you read the chapter for today? I tried, but it wasn't easy to get through. What does the woman mean? Number 15. Are you having much success with your garden? No, there are too many rocks in the soil. What does the man mean? Number 16. This weather is incredibly beautiful. You can say that again. What does the woman mean? Go on to the next page. Number 17. Have you figured out the problem with my car? Yes. The engine needs to be tuned up. Who is the man most likely to be? Number 18. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. That sandwich was really tasty. What does the woman mean? Number 19. Is Marie feeling better now? Yes, she's finally feeling quite healthy. What does the man imply about Marie? Number 20. I'm really having problems in this psychology class. Why don't you see your professor during her office hours? What does the woman suggest to the man? Number 21. Why are you saving your money? I'd like to buy a house at the beach. What does the man mean? Number 22. I think Sally really said some mean things. So do I. What does the man mean?
number 23. Can you turn the stereo up? I can't really hear it. The music is a little soft. What does the man mean? Number 24. What happened when you gave Larry the present? He thanked me over and over. What does the woman say about Larry? Number 25. Can I help you? I'd like to check in, please. I need a single room for one night. Where does this conversation probably take place? Number 26. I really like these photos of my hometown. Why don't you put them up on the wall? What does the woman suggest? Number 27. Does Carl know about the meeting? I'll have to let him know about it. What does the woman mean? Number 28. Why was your textbook cheaper than mine? Mine wasn't new. What does the man mean? Number 29. What did the teacher just say? I didn't hear it. She announced that she would be giving an exam soon. What does the man mean? Number 30. How often does the government conduct a census? Once each decade. What does the woman mean? This is the end of part A. Go on to the next page. Now read and listen to the directions for part B. Part B. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Questions 31 through 34. Listen as two friends discuss a meeting of the ski club. Hi, Jack. Hi, Wanda. Where are you rushing to? I'm heading for a meeting of the ski club. It starts at 3 o'clock. The ski club? Yes, the ski club. Do you want to come along? What does the ski club do? Well, you get to know other people who enjoy skiing, listen to lectures and presentations on skiing techniques and equipment, and, best of all, plan skiing trips. Doesn't that sound good? It does sound great, but I don't exactly know how to ski very well. That doesn't matter. You don't have to know how to ski. You just have to want to learn how to ski. That sounds like my kind of club. I guess I'll come along with you and try it. We've got to hurry. It's almost three o'clock. Number 31. 
What time does the meeting begin? Number 32. What do people do at ski club meetings? Number 33. What problem does the man have? Number 34. What will the man probably do next? Questions 35 through 38. Listen as a man and woman discuss a new type of fast food packaging. I was reading an article in the paper about a new type of fast food packaging. It's really great. What's so great about this packaging for fast food? What's great is that the packaging is edible. Edible? That's right. With this new packaging, you can go to a fast food restaurant, order a burger and fries, and then eat the wrappings that the burger and fries came in. So, you'd be eating paper? Oh, no. The wrappers sort of look and feel like paper, but they're really made from things like soybeans, corn, flour. It sounds like the wrappers might be even better for you than the fast food. Number 35. Where did the man learn about the new fast food packaging? Number 36. What is interesting about the new fast food packaging? Number 37. What is used to make the fast food packaging? Number 38. What does the woman think about the new fast food packaging? This is the end of Part B. Go on to the next page. Now read and listen to the directions for Part C. Part C. Directions. In Part C of this section, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, you will read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, Find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you will hear, Listen to an instructor talk to his class about painting. Artist Grant Wood was a guiding force in the school of painting known as American Regionalist a style reflecting the distinctive characteristics of art from rural areas of the United States. Wood began drawing animals on the family farm at the age of three, and when he was 38, one of his paintings received a remarkable amount of public notice and acclaim. This painting, called American Gothic, is a starkly simple depiction of a serious couple staring directly out at the viewer. Now listen to a sample question. What style of painting is known as American Regionalist? In your test book, you will read A. Art from America's inner cities B. Art from the central region of the United States 
C. Art from various urban areas in the United States. D. Art from rural sections of America. The best answer to the question, what style of painting is known as American Regionalist, is D. Art from rural sections of America. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Now listen to another sample question. What is the name of Wood's most successful painting? In your test book, you will read A. American Regionalist B. The Family Farm in Iowa C. American Gothic D. A Serious Couple The best answer to the question, what is the name of Wood's most successful painting? is C. American Gothic. Therefore, the correct choice is C. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Go on to the next page. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a guide on a bus tour. I'm sure you all enjoyed that trip along the Grand Canyon and the Colorado River. It's quite amazing, isn't it? The next stop on our tour is the Petrified Forest. This is a huge desert forest that is not exactly made of trees. You see, the trees are so old that they've fallen and have turned to stone. They look just like fallen logs, but they're no longer made of wood. Instead, they are made of beautifully colored stone, such as jasper, agate, carnelian, and onyx. It's unbelievable to see all of these fallen trees from a distance, and then up close, see that they're really stone and not wood. When we arrive at the petrified forest, please be sure to keep in mind that it's against the law to take any petrified wood out of the forest with you. You may think about picking up just a tiny little piece, but please don't do it. Number 39. Where have they just been? Number 40. Where are they heading now? Number 41. What has happened to the wood? Number 42. What does the man ask them not to do? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a talk by a university student advisor. You're all seniors now, and you should all be graduating in June at the end of this school year. But now, at the beginning of your senior year, you have a couple of things to remember in order to graduate in June. First of all, you need to fill out a request to graduate form. You should fill this form out and turn it into your advisor. You need to do this by December if you want to graduate in June. The second thing you need to do is to order your cap and gown. During the graduation ceremony at this university, all the graduating seniors wear the same blue and gold cap and gown. You'll also need to place your order for your cap and gown by the end of December. So remember the two important things if you want to graduate in June. Fill out the request to graduate form and order your cap and gown. Don't forget now. Number 43. What is the woman mainly discussing?
Number 44. What must the students do with the request to graduate form? Number 45. What must the students order? Number 46. When must the students place their orders? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a talk by a man who works with animals. Today, dogs are being trained in a variety of ways. One way that dogs are being trained involves smell. For example, dogs are being trained to use their sense of smell to find missing persons, hidden drugs, or explosives such as dynamite. Dog trainers have found that almost all types of dogs have equally good senses of smell. Even though different types of dogs have equivalent senses of smell, they aren't equally good at different tasks. However, certain types of dogs are better at certain tasks because of other characteristics they have. For example, beagles are small and friendly so they're often used at crowded airports to smell for illegal food products in luggage. German shepherds have quick reactions, so they're often used to smell for explosives such as dynamite. Golden retrievers work well in the cold, so they're often used to find people lost in the snow. Number 47. What is the topic of the passage? Number 48. What is true about the various types of dogs? Number 49. Why are German shepherds used to find explosives? Number 50. What are some dogs trained to find? This is the end of CD2.